प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह बोलो गण श्याम महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, Pujapada Guruji, Pujya Santo, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Money, a five letter word that holds great power, a five letter word, the reason why there is chaos in the world. A five-letter word, why each and every one, you can say, from the wealthy to the poor, are striving for more and more, day and night, struggling, working, or at least using their brains to accumulate more and more money. But, what can a person buy with money? Just think, if there was all the money you had in the world. You can buy anything you wanted. Just think about it. A, mid a middle class person, compared to him, Warren Buffett, or even Queen Elizabeth II, the Queen of the United Kingdom, what can't they buy? They can buy anything they want in the world. Even if they had half the money in the world, they can still buy anything they wanted. You're probably wondering, how much money is there in the world? Well, I was researching and I found out that there's approximately $241 trillion accumulated in the world. That's the total, you can say that there's money on the world. Now, trillion is about 12 zeros. So you can just imagine that Bill Gates is the most richest man and he's still in the billions, the half a billion range. And this is 241 trillion. So there's much money in the world. But I had a question. There is all the money in the world, but there's three things that you can't buy from all the money in the world. I bet you don't know what the three things are. Can you guess? No idea, right? Because they're spiritual. It has nothing to do with the world. I was reading Gunatitan Swami Nisvato. Gunatitan Swami was a great pom prominent saint in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's era. And uh, he was the head of Junagad Mandir, a temple. And what he did was he just talked and talked to saints, devotees, and saints would narrate his talks. After he ascended back to Akshardham, they made a book called Swami Nivato. Those are all his talks composed in a book. Now, inside of that book, there is this one talk that I wanted to discuss to all of you about today. So I'm going to read it to you. Swami Narayan Hare, Swami Narayan Hare. Swami Vaad Karije. Karod rupya kharchi pan ava sadhu male nahi. Ne karod rupya deta pan a vato male nahi. Ane karod rupya apta pan a manushya de male nahi. ने आपने पन करोड़ जन्म धरिया चे पन कोई वक्त आओ जोग मलियो न थी नेकर सुकरवा दे धरियो। Now this is in Gujarati text, so I read the original talk, so I wanted to read it to you in English translation to make it easy. Even by spending tens of millions of rupees, such a sadhu is unattainable. Even by giving tens of millions of rupees, such spiritual talks are un unattainable. Even by giving tens of millions of rupees, this human body cannot be attained. And we too have taken tens of millions of births, but never have we ever such had company of a God-realized sadhu. Otherwise, why would we have taken birth? Very short talk, but there's so much emphasis behind this talk that we can talk for days and days about it. But 
since we have limited time, I want to go just briefly over and analyze this talk. First and foremost, Swami says that even if one had tens of millions of rupees, now rupees, Swami was living in that era, and even as of right now in India, they use the currency rupees. But let's just switch that word out for dollars so you understand it even better. Even by spending tens of millions of dollars, you can say, one cannot attain such a sadhu. What does that mean, attain such a sadhu? Sadhu means saint. Now, it's probably new to you, some of you, attain such a sadhu. That's, that, that's a word that is not common. And how could you attain a sadhu? Meaning you can meet someone, you can greet someone, you can talk to someone, you can have a conversation with someone. But how can you attain a sadhu? Well, Swami is trying to say that to have the company of a sadhu, meaning have the association, right now as in the world, we have many, many friends. They're not like sadhus, but you don't know if they, how good they are, how bad they are. But a person who receives the company of a sadhu becomes something different. How do I put it? Let's just say that in the beginning of a butterfly's life, it's just a worm. But after transformation, after it is integrated in the right habitat, you can say, it one day becomes a butterfly and flies away from its nest. In the same exact way, when one attains a sadhu and associates with him, he becomes like a mukt and goes to akshardham. That's what Swami is saying. Now, according to the Vachanamrut, Gadada, first chapter 14, the Vachanamrut, Sri Maharaj himself says the profound association of the saint that I have attained is like a magnificent chintamni and a kalpuruksh. Now, these words you probably haven't even heard. Chintamni and kalpuruksh. What is chintamni? Chintamni means a philosopher's stone. Just think, uh, before in the old times, they believed in the fountain, wishing fountains, like that. This is just a stone that if you had it, and if you thought of something, you would attain it right away. It's not fake, it's not made up, it is reality, it is here, but it's divine, you can say. And a kalpuruksh, what does that mean? Kalpuruksh means there, it's a tree, a majestical tree, or if you sit underneath it, if you sit underneath the tree and think of anything you desire, you will get it that instant. So these are majestical, yet they are also true, you can say, because Bhagwan himself has said them, and they are, according to Bhagwan's words, re reality, but we cannot perceive them. So what is Bhagwan saying? He's saying the profound association of the saint that I have attained is like a magnificent jintamni and a kalpuruksh. I'm reminded of a story. Remember how we talked about Gunatina and Swami? Well, one time Swami was traveling with his saints in Junagadh region. And, uh, you know, in that time, they didn't have facilities like us where there were showers and everything. So saints used to take a shower or you can take a bath in a river. So at that time, it was very, very, the winter season, very cold. So Swami and his saints were taking a bath. And when Swami came out, it was so cold that he became unconscious because of the cold. So right there, Swami fell to the ground. All his saints gathered and they were all worried. But from a far distance, there was a mother and his, uh, her daughter and her boy, little boy. And they were just looking and they saw Swami and they saw Swami fell down. So they knew that it was because of the cold. So as family, the family was very poor and they didn't have much work. Their only work, their only occupation was they gathered wood from the forest and they pretty much sold that wood for money and lived by. They didn't have a home. They didn't have anything like that. So the mother thought right away that if we make a fire next to Swami, then Swami would again, you know, wake up, become conscious, and he would be okay. So the mother commanded the boy and the daughter to go and get wood from the forest and then commanded the boy to go make a fire next to Swami. 
The boy asked, Mother, I'm okay with doing this, but what will we eat? Because we haven't got any food for the day yet. We haven't sold any wood. We haven't gotten any money. What will we do? The mother said, don't worry. Let's do the service of Swami today. So the boy, as commanded, got wood from the forest and went next to Swami and made a small fire. In just a couple minutes, obviously when heat is next to one's body, one's body warms up right away and Swami became conscious. So Swami was told by all his saints that this boy made a fire next to me and uh, or next to you and pretty much uh, made you conscious. So Swami found out all his, you can say, background because where he's from, what he did, where he lived and found his whole situation out. So Swami became very pleased and said, please ask for something. You know, I give you a wish. Just like, you know, a chintamni or a kalpuruksh gives you a wish, right? Ask for something. Swami said, ask for something. The boy was smart. So the boy said, Swami, you understand my situation. I don't have a family that, well, they're not, you know, I don't have money. We don't have a place to live. So please grace my mother and my daughter and myself so we can live a better life. Swami says, it will be done. And that's it. Swami left and the boy and uh, the mother and the daughter left. And they were traveling around again because their occupation was to collect wood. And they were traveling and finding wood in the region where the kingdom was. The king of Junagadh lived there in that area. And he came out for a walk in the forest. And he spotted the daughter of, you know, the boy and the mother. And he said, I wanted to marry this woman woman this you can say woman and all of a sudden it wasn't even time and all the marriage arrangements were made and the king married the daughter so obviously what happens the boy and the mother also became royalty and after some time when the boy grew up the king made him as you can say head leader and pretty much uh gave him rule of uh his army but Saying this, the moral is that the Satpurush, when Gunathan Swami met the boy and the boy did some kind of deed and made the fire, that's when Gunathan Swami graced him. And by that grace, by that Chintamni wish, you can say, the boy was blessed with a better life. In Haricharitram Sagar, there is this verse that I want to go through with you, and I think you would understand it better if I sang it. Satapurusha he chinta mani jese jeso chinta ve mile te se chinta mani sabko ichhat sukha Sadguru Adharan Swami writes in this verse that the Satpurush is like a chintamni, meaning a wishing stone. Whatever you ask for, whatever you desire, you receive. And he does not wish for any kind of pain to happen to you. In the same way, Sadguru Gunathan Swami, he always wished for the well-being of the boy. And that's what happened. And no pain was, or no harm was done to him. So that's why the company of Asadu is very, very necessary. Moving on. And you cannot buy it even if you had all the money in the world. Moving on. Swami says that these spiritual talks cannot be bought even with tens of millions of dollars. Spiritual talks. Obviously, the company of a sadhu goes in hand in hand with his spiritual talks. If you didn't have his association, you wouldn't have his talks. It goes hand in hand. But in the Vachnamrut, Gurdada Middle Chapter 13th Vachnamrut, Sri Jumarat says that even these facts may be in the scriptures, it is only when the Satpurush manifest on this earth and one hears them being narrated by him that one understands them. 
meaning no matter how much katha you listen to by you can say the mouth of others if this person is not a satpurush one will not understand them but bhagwan is saying here that no matter how many books you read no matter how much you can memorize no matter how much you read day and night if these talks are not you can say heard from the speech of a satpurush then one cannot understand them because the satpurush is an experienced guide if you wanted to go from you can say here to let's say the united kingdom in a plane a plane is just a ve- a type of vehicle you can say a type of form of transportation but if you didn't have a pilot you wouldn't reach in the same way the satpurush is a guide without him you can't understand or you can't comprehend the spiritual language at all i mean just look sadguru gunatitan swami he lived in junagadh for 40 years and all he did was just speak talks and talks and there was a book made by it called swami nivato as we discussed you can even say i remember the incident of sadguru muktanand swami muktanand swami uh, he had a group of saints and one of the saints decided that he didn't want to stay in you know saintly life he wanted to go away and become a householder so muktanand swami said why don't you wait it out maybe let's say 10 15 days and let's see what happens until we get to this area why don't you wait so swami what he did was swami was smart so he started talking to the saint and he gave him such kind of strength that he completely changed his mind's perspective and when they reached that destination in 15 days that when and swami said now you you are free to go the saint himself said swami I had made a mistake. I don't want to leave your company. But how did that happen? Spiritual talks like Swami's. In the same way, one cannot buy spiritual talks from sadhus even with all the money in the world. And lastly, Swami says this human body. Now, you can say nowadays we use this human body for the wrong purposes or just to kind of a uh, enjoyed the worldly pleasures but the human body is very rare why because there's 8.4 million species types in the world and we get a human body after the soul travels because of the birth and death life cycle and it gets this human body after the cycle of 8.4 million life species so after you become a rabbit a dog a horse everything one time you get this human body so its rarity is very very valuable but no one understands the value moreover i was looking at and reading this article and according to wired magazine it said the human bone marrow dna lungs kidneys and a heart approximately cost 45 million dollars just these parts not the human the whole body just these couple of integrative parts but 45 million dollars that's a lot of money yet we don't have value for this body at all there's 8 billion people on this world right now as we can say every human has a different eye different fingerprint different hair follicle you can say different even different dna different body parts even if they're twins even if they're born as twins they still have different fingerprint even retina our eyes they're different as well i mean when you go to go get visa in any consulate or go to for passports they take your fingerprint and retina why they know that no one can duplicate that they know that there's no one on, in the world that has the same fingerprint or retina display in the same way look at what god has created everything is different yet everything is working in function yet there's no value that can be put on this body but only when you know one attains the company of a sadhu one attains the company of a satpurush 
one can understand one's value. That's why, again, not all the money in the world can buy the human body. We reviewed three things, the company of a sadhu, his spiritual talks, and the human body. None of these can be bought with all, all the money in the world. But you know how our situation is like? Let me tell you, a blind man, he committed a sin, a very big sin. So the king thought to himself, how can I punish a blind man, right? How could you punish a blind man? There's no way. He's blind. What can you do? So around the king's king kingdom, there was a 24-mile, you can say, long fort just around it. A fort meaning a wall and one gate. So the king was smart. What he did was he told the blind man to start, you know, touch this wall and start to walk. And when you reach the gate, obviously there's only one gate. When you reach the gate, you're free. So the blind man started walking. So his left hand was on the wall and his right hand had a stick so he can feel the way, right? So he started walking, walking. And just when he was about to reach that one gate, he had a scratch on his head. So he scratched his head for a couple moments and he missed that gate. And again, when he touched the wall, he thought that the, the exit is not here yet. In the same exact way, we have all these particular items. We have the company of a sadhu, we have the spiritual talks, we even have this human body. Yet, just like how the blind man scratched his head and missed the exit, we are missing the point where we need to integrate these three things into our life and make them more, you can say, or develop more value for them. That's why in this talk, Swami says that if we had attained a God-realized sadhu, why would we take this body? Meaning, if we had re realized or if we had the company of such a sadhu, then he would automatically send us to Akshradham. So, regarding this point, please keep in mind that our human life, our human body, the company of a sadhu and his talks are very valuable. Gansham Maharaj Nijay Varnivesharamaniya darsanam mandahasaruchirananam bhujam Poojitam suranaro tamermuda Dharmanandana maham vichintai Dharmanandana maham vichintai Sri Ganeshyam Maharajani Jai Almighty Supreme Lord, our beloved Ganeshyam Maharaj Pooja Guruji Pujay Bhagat Jain, all of you, it is Jai Swami Narayan. First of all, very, very happy New Year 2015. I'm not going to ask how is your last year 2014. But each and every country, they have their own customs, they have their own tradition, their own culture. And according to that, just as here in US and in European countries, people mostly like to celebrate their 31st means the last day of the year as well as the 
first day of the new year they celebrate uh, in gathering in party uh, drinking an alcohol eating some special foods in this way they celebrate their new year now in india they have also their own culture their own tradition and we have also the unique system of celebrating this kind of festivals like the last day of the year and new uh, first day of the new year in hindu calendar the last day and the new year day is celebrated in the days of diwali now here and uh, difference between he, uh, the culture of western and indian the most thing is that here there is no any kind of religious r- religious uh, involvement in the celebration uh, and on the other hand in indian culture they have their most involvement in religious while they celebrating their new year days now in the both countries one similarity and that is to uh that is the that thing is that uh to give one uh gifts and either gifts or greet someone or each other this is the common custom between those uh this both cultures western and indian now in india when the people celebrate their new year days then either god or his great saint the grand people or gives them some special blessings in the same way bhagwan swami narayan before 200 years on the first day of the year of 1820 first january 1820 bhagwan swami narayan was at the time living in gadda at the same t- day sri ji murad was sitting on a large decorated cot on the veranda outside the room facing north in live with the mandir of sri vasudev and in line with the mandir of sri vasudev narayan in dada khachas darbar in gadda he was wearing a white case and had covered himself with a white cotton cloth he had also tied a white fetter around his head around his neck were garlands of white flowers and tassels of white flowers were dangling from his uh, from both of his ears he was also wearing a string of white flowers around his wrist and at that time while some munis were singing devotional songs other munis as well as devotees from various places had gathered before him in an assembly this is a kind of celebration in india now uh, there are three places Th- uh, there are three places and there are three times bhagwan swaminar was celebrating the 1st january in times of vachanamrut not on vachanamrut but every day bhagwan used to do speak in assembly but in the vachanamrut there are three places it is written that on 1st january bhagwan swaminar was gathered in this village and in this sabha and he spoke in this manner now this is the 30th vachanamrut of gadda first chapter the title of that vachanamrut is thoughts that leave a lasting impression we are talking about new year's gifts and greets this is the best wishes for us and the special blessings on the first day bhagwan swami has given or to his followers in the assembly a very scholar of sanskrit dinanath bhad who was the devotee of bhagwan swami he was also sitting in the assembly and he asked maharaj one question and then after giving reply to this question bhagwan swami and blessed the assembly we know in computer when you use a bar photoshop at a photoshop then when you use 
uh, RGB con configuration, then you have a choice of more than 2.3 million different colors. But how these colors are the, how you have the choice of these 2.3 million different colors? Computer has only three options, R, G, B. R means red, G means green, and B means blue. Computer makes these three colors, red, green, and blue. And with the mixture of this color, computer gives us the choice of 2.3 million different colors. When we think upon our own self, our own life, we can also find out these three colors in our life. Just consider red as a Tamagun, green as a Rajagun, and blue as Satvagun. Now, what is Tamagun, what is Rajagun, and what is Satvagun? Tamagun, in, uh, this is the uh, three states of our mind. Our mind is never remain without any state. Either we have Tamagun, either Rajagun or Satvagun. And more than that, if we make a uh, micro, or, uh, micro observation on our thought, then we can also find out, according to Vachanamru, that we have also uh, states uh, of the combination of Rajagun, Tamagun or Rajagun, Satvagun in this way. Just as computer makes the uh, RGB, we have also our mind also mixed this Tamagun, Rajagun, and Satvagun. And as computer has uh, different colors with the mixture of this RGB, we have also um, various kind of thoughts in our mind due to this state of uh, our state of mind due to Rajagun, Tamagun, and Satvagun. Now, when a person has tamagun in his mind then in this state he always feels some darkness meaning he remain unaware fully unawareness of anything and everything and also he feels some lethargy he also uh, always feels some laziness in uh, in this state of mind now, in Rajogun, Rajogun is the is a state of mind in which a person has uh, some desire for sensual gratification, uh, like a uh, basis of eating good foods, or he has a uh, desire to wear nice clothes, new clothes. In this way, there are many desires remain in this state, and in Satvagun, he always remain eternally happy. This is a quality of goodness, and that's why when a person has satvagun in his mind, at the time he always feels uh, very virtuous thoughts, not a bad thoughts, only thoughts related to God. And also, this is the state of awareness. So, whenever some disturbing thoughts occur in this in his mind while he has satvagun in his mind, then he aware that this is the wrong thing and so he can prevent such thoughts. Now this is what Rajogun, Tamagun and Satvagun but in this Vachanamrat on the 1st January 1820s Bhagwan Swaminarayan in, while sitting in Garuda he, he was speaking in such a manner that what is the exact effect of these three kinds of goon on our mind and on our life. So Bhagwan says the reason is the influence of the guns. Thoughts occurring when Thamagun is predominant induce a state similar to that of deep sleep. This is the quality of Thamagun. When a person has Thamagun in his mind, he always uh, feel like laziness and also like drowsy. And he, al he also like to sleep. This is a quality of Thamagun. Therefore, those thoughts do not leave a lasting impression in the mind. Bhagwan giving the reply of the question of Dinanath, but he has asked Maharaj a question that, Maharaj, many times we have 
lots of thoughts in our mind but not every thoughts leave a lasting impression in our mind but only as some some are rare thoughts which give us a uh, impression on our mind what is the reason behind this this is the question and bhagwan swaminarayan giving the reply to this to the question and bhagwan says the uh, the reason behind this influence of thoughts is the gun prevails in one's mind and then bhagwan says uh, when person has a tamagun then he always like to uh, he always feel like that of a deep sleep therefore those thoughts do not leave a lasting impression in the mind when satvagun prevails one experiences a state of awareness so any disturbing thoughts that occur at the time are dispelled by contemplation so whenever a person who has a quality of satvagun in his mind and at the time whether due to his past births or his previous karmas he his mind is pondering upon uh, his desire of other vices other things than god then as he has satogun in his mind so he definitely prevent those other thoughts whether that is desirous or anything else therefore those thoughts do not leave a lasting impression either how thoughts that arise when rajogun is prevalent do leave a lasting impression in the mind therefore the reason some thoughts do leave a lasting impression in the mind and others do not is due to the prevalence of the various guns so when rajogun is prevail in one's mind this is the state in which one a person who has rajogun in his mind he always desire for for something he always wishes for good food good nice clothes uh or a nice touch or smelling in every way he always desire for nice thing to uh for a pleasure of his sensual but bhagwan swamina after describing the reason behind these thoughts leaving lasting impression on one's mind bhagwan swamina the most important things and the blessing of the first day of the year bhagwan swamina says if one engage in satsang and always busy uh, always remain busy in satsang then there is no such gun prevail more time in one's mind and there is, there will be no any particular thoughts which can give a lasting impression on one's mind if one remains busy in satsang and bhagwan swaminarayan himself plays the devotees that when uh, if you engage yourself in the satsang more time then there is no any bad thoughts remain in your mind for more time this is the greatest blessings of bhagwan swaminarayan for his devotees and we are also talking about this rgb and also about the new year gifts and greets so bhagwan swaminarayan give these gifts in the form of his discourse of this 30th vachanavrat gora first chapter and in this vachanamrit bhagwan swaminarayan gives us the message that if you engage yourselves in the satsang if you listen discourses related to god which is take place in in our satsang and when you read our scriptures of our fellowship and if you engage yourself in the company of saints then you have no chance to prevalence of these kind of different types of thoughts in your mind and you always remain uh first in satvagun uh, in which you have always thoughts related to god and then after when you connect with the saints and associate yourselves with the saint more time then you will definitely go in such a state that there is not even remain a satvagun and you always feel Uh, eternal bliss of bhagwan swami narayan which is only in the uh, divine abode of bhagwan swami narayan aksardham now in another vachanamrut bhagwan uh, bhagwan swami narayan giving the reply to the question that how can one uh, remove these qualities of rajogun satogun and tamogun from one's mind and life 
then in that vachanamrita bhagwan swaminarayan gives the reply that when one attain a pleasure from the heart of the great sin then one can automatically remove from the problems of this rajogun thamogun and satvagun and one become a very pious and enjoy the eternal bliss of bhagwan now we have a, we have attained such a satpurush in the form of our puja guru ji and so if we follow each uh, follow each and every command of our guru ji and if we keep faith in the words of our guru ji and santo and follow it then we will also remain in the state beyond in the state which is beyond the three, three qualities of tamogun rajogun and satvagun now just as the mixture of red green and blue computer has 2.3 million different f- colors we have also a different and millions of thoughts in our mind uh with the help of tamogun rajogun and satvagun one recently before 2 years a particular organization has made a calculation and in that calculation they have found out that uh 2.3 words per second one can listen or speak through one's eyes and ears uh one can consume the words 2.3 words per second one can listen or see this is the calculation and in this way a person has millions of words throughout the day now pondering in our own life whether we see or listen or speak thousands and millions of words in a day but how many words we listen or we see or meaning read or speak which is god related in the day this is it it, it is our duty and it is the lesson for our own life that we should ponder in our in our own words in our own wo- uh, words which we listen and which we speak then we should sort out the worldly words which is the not related to god and we should improve the words related to god or the scriptures this is what the lessons from these new year's blessings of bhagwan swami narayan and let we pray to bhagwan swami narayan for a uh, better and prosperous new year for you and by saying this jai swami narayan shri ganeshyam maharajani jai shri patim shri dharam sarva deveshwaram bhakti dharmatmajam vasudevam hare madavam keshavam kamadam karanam swaminarayanam nilakantham bhaje shri ganeshyam maharajani jai